ask and ye shall receive, as the old saying goes. I received a request or a comment on one of my other videos on DaVinci Resolve asking for a bit of an intro to the audio tab or the audio panel or really the Fairlight panel in DaVinci Resolve. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I'm going to give you kind of a high-level intro to it, and then I'll also reference other videos that I have on the subject as well. So I've got this short film here that I'm editing, and as you can see, I've got multiple audio tracks with the audio files as well as uh, music and that kind of stuff. When you click on the Fairlight, it focuses strictly on the audio. You do get to see up in the upper right corner a little visual of the film as it's playing along. Across the top we can see all our levels, that kind of stuff. Um, the, the timelines down here in the middle. If you want to play it, it works kind of the same as the edit panel. You can hit the play screen, it'll start playing through. You hit stop, it'll stop. You can go back, forward, that kind of stuff. A little bonus tip, what I'd recommend to make your life easier is to try to have each timeline set for something specific. So for example, maybe have audio one as you, all of your audio, audio two maybe as your sound effects, audio you know three is your music, that kind of thing. In my case, my audio one you'll see here, I actually have it muted. That's what this little checked red box means because what I did is I actually edited my audio in a different program and then brought it back in here. So I'm just muting that first level altogether. Uh, other ones that you have here, you have the S. When you hit that, that's the solo mode. Uh, that uh, does that track and nothing else. The R is for recording when you want to do your voiceover. The lock here is to lock it so you can't make any changes to it unintentionally. The other thing that you kind of want to look at is going to be your meters. And I'll show you what I mean here. I'm going to hit play. Now if you saw how loud that was, that's because that's this music down here on the bottom level making all kinds of noise. You can't even hear the dialogue happening. So I'm going to mute that, and okay. now I'm going to hit play again. We've always been friendly. And you can kind of many, see where my meters ago, are. So my main one down here on the lower Chinese right, it's kind of peaking yes, in the yellow, well, 10 to 15. Right it's pretty quiet, yes, basically. What you want this to be is in that negative so 10 all, to Thank negative 15 range. Yeah. So on this video, it might be worth bringing up the audio just a little bit. So let's say you want to bring up the audio or reduce the audio. You can click on that timeline. So notice now it's selected in the red. And you have an inspector in the upper right here. This is exactly the same as the inspector in the edit panel. And you can then adjust that clip volume, raising it, lowering it. And you can see as I'm bringing it up, the volumes are going up, lowering it, it's going back down. So I can bring it up. And then if I hit play again, Beginning. It, the way you can kind of see now, person we're getting more into the yellows, a little child, bit of the red. So it might even be a little bit higher. So I bring it down just a little bit. It doesn't seem that you're really listening to us. And you that's looking a little speak, better towards peaking out to try to keep it in within those yellow sections. You can do the same thing if you close the inspector. You can grab within the timeline there and raise and lower it there as well. To zoom in, hit this little bar up here on the top. And that'll let you zoom in and out if you want. Or you can use your keypad. The short key for that is the control plus. Next thing I'm going to show you here is going to be if you want to have fade-ins and fade-outs. So um, notice we start. Got a little intro title with some music. Now let's say I want to have that kind of fade in and out. I'm going to zoom in here and you can see we've got these little thing that you can grab and when you grab and drag it over that's telling it to fade in and out. So I'm going to put it right there and now let's play it again bit more of a fade on it now. And what you can do as well, zoom in a bit more, is you can adjust how you want that fade to come in. Do you want it to come in a little bit lower and then higher, or higher and then lower? Personally, I kind of like it to go a bit lower and then higher. A bit more dramatic that way. And it works the same way at the end. You just grab it at the end and drag it up or down if you want. Okay, so that's doing fades. 
very helpful, especially if you're overlapping or working on intros and outros. So I'm going to jump to the mixer over here on the right. So each track has a mixer track. If you don't see all of them, notice what I did here. It's got A1, 2, and then M1, which is the main one. And maybe I want to look at Audio 3, pull it out. It doesn't do it by default. And then within that, that's where we have some additional functionality. This is where you can hit, do your special effects. Notice you hit the little plus and then choose whichever special effects you want to do. I sometimes use a vocal channel personally because I do a lot of voiceover editing type stuff. Of these effects, I'm not going to get into really any detail on all of them, but this is where it is. I will show you one, and that's the dialogue processor. This is kind of handy for doing what I'm doing right now, which is recording a voiceover type thing. When you click on that and pull it up, it gives you a couple interesting little options. So on this first one on the right here, this Excite, notice it's defaulted to female. Well, I'm a guy, so I'm going to check the male on that one. Another thing I might play with on here is the rumble. And with the rumble, I might drop it down just a little bit. And that's just going to adjust the voice a little bit. For, like I mentioned, for what I'm doing, which is talking into a microphone here, you will see a little bit of a difference. And it also depends on how much you drop that frequency in the derumble. So notice we've got this little equalizer here. You just click on it, double click on it, and it's going to pull up your equalizer. This using the equalizer is a whole tutorial on its own, which I will do at a later date, but just remember the good old days of your stereo receiver with an equalizer. Uh, that's your equalizer panel. The next one below that is going to be your dynamics. This is another one that probably deserves its own separate tutorial. So with dynamics, this is going to kind of adjust some of your um, peaks and that kind of stuff. So uh, once again, that's a whole separate tutorial. For just getting started in DaVinci Resolve, really the main things you're going to want to know are going to be that inspector panel and making adjustments through there, the volumes, that kind of stuff. One that you'll definitely probably want to use quite a bit is going to be the normalize audio and let's take this second clip this section right here because as you can see when I zoom in notice it get so when I zoom in here you notice it gets kind of high and then kind of quiet so we might want to normalize that and what that's going to do is that's going to cut down on those peaks those really high t volume points what you do is right click on the clip go to normalize audio levels I would just leave it at the default Remember we said we wanted that target between minus 5 and minus 10. So by default it's at minus 9. So I'm going to hit normalize and notice what it does is it brings everything down to normalize it. This is really helpful in situations where you have somebody who's speaking really loudly and then maybe somebody else who's speaking really softly. It helps normalize it. Now if I play it. Back to use in the studio. So what do you think? It's still pretty quiet. So now that I've normalized that section of it, maybe I'll bring that vo overall volume up just a little bit more. I'm just going to hit Control-Z here a couple times to undo that. And now let's say maybe instead of doing that, I like how everything else is, but I still want to drop a couple points down where it's a bit loud. So what you can do is use your keyframes. So notice I'm, I've got it set right here. I'm going to hit Control on my keyboard. I'm going to hold Alt and then I'm going to click. And notice what it did zoom in a bit more, is it added a keyframe. And I want to add two keyframes. So the first one's basically saying up to this point, leave it at that level. Drag it over just a little bit, Alt, click again, and now I've got another keyframe. And then what I'm going to do is go to the yep. end where I want it to stop, Alt, click again, and then just a little bit past that, Alt, click. So I've got those ones. Now I'm going to take that middle section, and I'm going to reduce the volume just a little bit. So notice what it's doing is it's dropping it right there just in that little section. So using keyframes is a really handy way in order to adjust volume for specific sections. Let's go forward here just a little bit and let's say this section here is really quiet. I'm going to do the same thing but this time I'll use the inspector to show you the difference. So in the inspector I'm going to still going to move the playhead where I want it and then I'm going to hit keyframe and then I'm going to add another keyframe right past it. And then 
I'm going to go to the end where I want to raise it, and I'm going to add a couple keyframes. And I'm going to raise that little section up. So now that bit is going to be a bit louder. And that's why you also want to make sure to add two keyframes, one to keep it where it's at, and uh, one for the adjustment. The next thing I'm going to show you has to do with music. So I purposely added a music track here on Audio 4. It's been muted, so I'm going to unmute it. And as you might recall from when I played it earlier, it's super loud and trumps all the noise. Well, of course, you can grab it and just drag the volume down a little bit. But you can also use that Normalize Audio again that we did earlier. So I'm going to right-click on it, hit Normalize Audio, and I'm going to actually bring that target level down uh, just a bit more. And then that way, we can actually kind of hear the... a little bit. So there's a better way to do this as well, and it involves using the Dynamics option that I mentioned earlier. Once again, I'm going to do a completely separate tutorial on that, so I won't go into it here because this is just a quick introduction into the Fairlight panel. And I'm going to show you one more thing here, and it has to do with doing voiceover. So I'm doing a voiceover right now. So let's say I wanted to add some voiceover. It's pretty quick and easy. I can add a new track if I want to, so I'm just going down to the audio below the Audio 4, right-clicking, going Add Track, and let's say Stereo. Next thing I need to do, so I've got my track right, but it doesn't know to connect to this microphone that I'm speaking into. So if I hit the little R here to tell it to start recording, notice I'm clicking on it, but nothing's happening. And same thing, if I hit the Record button up here, it's not going to record anything. What I need to do is jump over to the mixer, and I need to tell that mixer to, that we need an input of this microphone. So up here at the top under input, I'm going to select input, and now I've got the track that I want, which is audio 5. I'm going to hit the microphone that I want, which is the microphone I'm speaking into, the USB one, and I'm going to patch those. So I click patch here once they're both selected. Now they're connected so it knows to take the audio from the microphone I'm speaking into. And now, now notice what happened. happened. I went, slipped on the R, and you can see that the audio I'm recording is going to be, or the audio that I'm saying is going to be recorded. Now I can hit the little record button, and it's going to start recreating, and it's going to start recording. That's pretty much it. A little tip on this one is um, sometimes you might get a scenario where it doesn't recognize your input microphone what you need to do is actually go down to your inputs on your computer and you need to actually set that as the default one. Okay, so that's probably plenty for a quick intro in regards to the panel. Hopefully the, the jumping around there made sense. Like I said, I've got one tutorial already on recording voiceover. I'll link to that below and then I'm going to do separate tutorials on the equalizer and the dynamics because I think they're both worth having their own tutorials around them. For like a newbie, somebody that's just starting out in this, the main things that you're going to want to be doing is going to be adjusting those volumes. You can do that using your inspector. You're going to be doing keyframing in order to adjust it for certain sections and you'll be doing fade-ins and fade-outs and probably some voiceovers. And that's pretty much those main ones that you use this panel for to get started. And then once you get that down, you can start jumping into more advanced stuff like adjusting the equalizers uh, and uh, adding different effects to what you're working on. Hope you found this useful. As always, have a good day.